got a call from a guy selling a vintage car. So me and the old man are on our way to go check it out. So what do you got here? I got a 1931 Rio Flying Cloud. They put a lot of style when they built cars back then. It's like a box, but it's like an Arctic box. <laughs> <laughs> I called the guys from the pawn shop to see if they were interested in buying my 1931 Rio Flying Cloud. It's got a lot of old parts, so there would definitely need to be some restoration. I want to ask for about 40000 I would take no less than twenty five for sure. So how'd you get it? It's actually been in my family since the original purchase. That is so cool. You know what Rio stood for? It's R.E. Olds. After Olds sold his company, the Olds Motor Company, which later turned into Oldsmobile, he got bored and wanted to open up another car company, so he opened up the R.E. Olds Motor Company, and then Olds tried to sue him, so he just called it R.E.O. Oh, OK. The Royale was their top-of-the-line car. They were competing with Cadillac and uh, a lot of other the big car companies. Right. Um, right around 1920 is when everybody just started going nuts with automobiles. Sort of like the internet in the 1990s. There was over 500 car companies traded on the stock exchange. REO was actually one of the top automakers in the early 20th century in the United States. They made everything from cars to buses to fire trucks. And one of their cars even inspired the name of a band, REO Speedwagon. <sighs> Modern technology. Oh, I love these old things. That's the original carburetor, original distributor, no power steering. It just looks like a worm gear. They were basic simple. You could rebuild one with a crescent wrench. Oh, the interior's fair. It looks like most of it's here. If you're really going to restore it, it's all going to be ripped out, though. Half the interior is wood. It's a lot cheaper to keep on putting wood floors in it instead of paying for all the equipment to make steel floors. Can you start it up? It's kind of a two-person procedure, actually. Wow. It's amazing this thing still runs after 80 years, but the sounds it's making are not good. On one hand, it's an incredibly cool classic car. On the other hand, it runs like a piece of But these are the kind of projects I love to see restored, and I can make a huge profit on it. I just need to be careful about jumping in head first. All right, well, it definitely needs a lot of work. So what do you want to do with this thing? I'd like to sell it. OK. How much were you looking to get out of it? Uh, about 40000 Yeah, I'd like to, too. Let me have someone come down here and take a look at this thing, okay. and we'll talk about it. And we'll figure out if we can do something. All right, okay. Sounds great. What's going on, Dan? Morning, guys. How you doing? I'm one of those guys that's just obsessed with cars, looking at them, taking things apart just to see how they work. So I'm a car freak. How long have you had the car? I've had it for three years. Uh -huh. It's been in my family since 1931. Wow. Does it run? It does run, yeah. Does it drive? I would want to drive it with the wheels, but uh -huh. I believe it would, yeah. What I think is really cool about the Rio, they really kind of pioneered the hydraulic internal expanding brakes, which we all know as drum brakes now. Okay. Mind if I take a little look at it here and see what's going on? How about it? All right. These cars are really cool to me because they represent a really neat era. Things were simpler then. You can look at the designs on them and see how they worked, and easy to maintain, easy to work on, and that just kind of represents a cool time for me. It's pouring a lot of fuel out of the bottom. Let's not start it. We had it running. How'd it sound? It sounded good. Good. Was it smoking pretty bad? Yeah. Yeah. The interior's not too bad. It's all here. It could definitely use restoration. That's crazy, man. There is absolutely no slop in this steering whatsoever. This car is gorgeous as far as I'm concerned. It does need 100% restoration from front to back, but it's all there. So what's it worth now and what's it worth fixed up? In this market, everything is so soft right now. If it was a 100% fully restored museum piece, you're looking probably around 35. And uh, a bumper to bumper restoration, it could run you 30 grand. OK. But in this condition, eight grand. I assumed the thing was worth a lot more money. And uh, so did I. <laughs> yeah. It's one of those things. I mean, there's a lot of rare things out there that aren't worth a lot of money because you just don't have the market for it. If it was a Cadillac of the same era, it would be worth a lot more money. Thanks for coming by, Danny. Absolutely, brother. Thanks for having me. In defense of the car, she's gorgeous. She's all there. I just don't know that the value's there. I, I was pretty disappointed. Um, I really thought the vehicle would be worth more. I'd give you eight grand for it. Yeah, I really can't take anything less than 25, 30. Five years ago, you could have probably got 25,000 out of it. 
Thanks for letting me take a look at it, though, man. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. We appreciate it. I didn't settle for 8000 because the car, to me, is worth more than 8000 Maybe I'll just keep it and enjoy it like I, like I should. Classic car renovation is one of the riskiest things we do because the market is constantly changing. I offered eight grand because I feel the value will only go up, but I would have offered a lot more if it wasn't for Danny. He definitely saved my ass on this one.